Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing all the problems, almost all the problems, all the math problems from this book. If there is any math problem at all that gives you trouble, and if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the problems from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book, the second edition, happens to contain the exact same problem in most cases, and appearing again in most cases on the exact same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from the first edition. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. From 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions have not gone, gone away. They are still in the, in the new exam. Unfortunately for us, the newer books do not provide us enough provide us with enough practice problems. For that reason, from day number 401, we began solving quantitative comparison questions from this book here, the 10th edition of the General GRE. We are right now on page number 341. Please turn to it. Page number 341, problem number 7. Problem number 7, when it, when it appeared in the exam, 87% of the people who took the exam had no trouble with it. 13% of the people who missed it are the ones probably not counting the ones who made just stupid mistake because they were not paying attention but other, other people who missed it were the ones who probably did not know their tenths, the, their fifths, the quarters, the eighths, the thirds and the sixths by heart. Before you sit for the exam there are basic facts of arithmetic that you have to know by heart. There are basic facts of geometry that you have to know by heart. Do you understand? One of the basic things that they expect you to know, things like squares of, uh, squares of number 1 through 15 and uh, some basic uh, values of the pi and so forth. There are basic elements that you have to know. Everybody takes it for granted. And one of the, one of the things that you have to know for by, by heart, because it saves you time. You could actually do it in the calculator, but it will save you a great deal of time if you have the basic skills. One of the basic, th basic things you have to know by heart are the tenths. You have to know the tenths in their equivalent decimal form, in their percentage, in their fraction form. Fractions, decimals and percentages. In th all three different forms you have to know your fifths, your quarters, your eighths, your thirds and the sixth. If there is anything here that you do not know by heart and if you would like to learn these, these, these basic facts by heart, if you would like to learn these facts, uh, the, the videos that I, would, uh, that I would recommend that you watch are the two videos that are listed on the blackboard here. Just type in T's T's as in plural of T. Don't worry about what it is. Don't worry about what it is. Just type in T E A S T's day day eight. Just type in this tag and look for it. Search for it, and you'll you'll see a video that pops up. Similarly, type in T's day nine. Watch those two videos, and you will learn all the things that you need to know to do well on this particular question. Here's what the question says. What we are being asked to compare is this column A in column B. In column A we have 0.125 and in column B we have 1 8. That's how simple it is. Now what we learn in these videos when we're learning our 8, what we learn is that the 8, you don't have to memorize the 8 if you know your quarters. That's what I'm trying to make you understand. You don't have to memorize your 5th if you know your 10th. You do not have to memorize your 6th if you know your 3rds. Because the 6th are dry from the 3rd. The 8ths are just derivation of quarters. Fifth are simply derivation of tenths. One eighth, we know, is simply, it is simply half of one quarter. If you take half of one quarter, that's one eighth. And one quarter, we know, is 0.25. It's 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is one quarter. If you take a half of that, what is 25 divided by 2? Well, we know 24, 24 divided by 2 is 12. So this is going to be, for example, this is going to be the 12 
and then the re remaining one, the remainder, remainder of one, because 24 divided by 2 is 12, if you divide it by 2, you get 0 0.125, 0 0.125, but if you want to do it out, 2 has, 2 has 1 2's in it, 5 has 2 2's in it, remainder 1 goes here and joins to 0, becomes 10, and then we get a 5, there we go, 0 0.125, 0 0.125 is exactly what we have here, these two are equal, the answer is C, the answer is C. Similarly, we can learn your 3 8, you can learn your 5 8, and 7 8, and so on and so forth. But these are all different forms of the quarters. Eighth is no different than a quarter, third is no different than a sixth, the fifths are no different than the tenth. They're just different forms of the tenths. The fifths are different forms of the tenths. One fifth is just two tenths. Do you understand? Three fifths is just six tenths. It's no different. Let's do the next one, number eight. Question number eight. In question number 8 we are told, in question number 8 we are told, here 68% here of people got it right, we are told that the price of a pen is 10x plus y cents. We are told that the price of a pen is 10x plus y cents. We are also told that the price of a notebook, price of a notebook is, is 10y plus x cents. 10y plus x cents. Price of the pen is 10x plus y. And what we're being asked to compare. And we're also told, we also told that the sum of sum of the two prices. We are told that the sum of the two prices is $1.43. The sum of the two prices is $1.43. Here's what we're being asked to compare. In column A, we have X, and in column B, we have Y. That's all. What I, what I want you to do now is to pause the video for five seconds, do the problem yourself. Not for five seconds, I mean pause the video, do the problem yourself, and then compare your work against the work that, we, that we'll do together in, in a few seconds. I'll give you five seconds to pause and pause the video. Here we go. The sum of the price we are told is $1.43. So if you look at the pencil, price or rather pen, pen we know equals 10x plus y. Pencil, a uh, notebook rather we are told, notebook we are told is 10y is 10y plus x. 10y plus x. If we add, them, add up the two prices, we get 11x plus 11y. And that we are told is $1.43. $1.43. Before we do anything at all, before we make our life miserable, let's first see, let's first see if 143 is divisible by 11 or not. These numbers are there for a reason. They do not just fall from the sky. These numbers are chosen with great deal of thoughts, with great deal of uh, care. 143, let's see if we can divide it by 11. Let's do it here. 143 divided by 11. Or can we do it? Let's do it right here. 143 divided by 11. How many, how many 11s in a 1? One has no 11. One has no 11. That one is going to go and join the 4. That one goes and joins the 4, becomes 14. How many 11s in a 14? 14 has 1 11. 14 has 1 11. Try to do this thing by hand. Don't, don't reach for the bloody calculator. Do you understand? The calculator that they give you in the exam, the so-called calculator that gives you in the exam that appears on the screen, is a very annoying bloody thing. So it's not a very useful thing. It's not very convenient. It really slows you down. It distracts you from your work. So how many 11s in a 14? 14 has one 11. The remaining three goes and joins this guy and becomes, what do you know? 33. And how many threes, how many 11 does 33 have? 33 has three 11s. 33 has three 11s. So if you divide this entire equation by 11, if you were to divide this entire equation by 11, what we'll find is that x plus y equals, x plus y equals 13. x plus y equals 13. So here's what's going on. Here's what's going on. Essentially, what's going on here is this. I walk up to you, I walk up to you, and, and I tell you that I'm thinking of two numbers in my head. In my head, I'm thinking of two numbers. And I proudly tell you, that their sum is 13. 
I'm probably telling you that the two numbers that I'm thinking of, their sum is 13. And then I ask you, can you tell me which one is bigger? To which your answer would be, what the hell? How the hell do I know which one is bigger? All I know is their sum is 13. Maybe this guy is 1 and this guy is 12. Maybe this guy is 12 and this guy is 1. Maybe they are both 6 and a half. How the hell do I know? Answer is D. The answer is D. Question number 9. Question number 9. Let's see what the what the what the what they give us in nine. Question number nine happens to be a geometry question. Let's see what they tell us in nine. Question number nine, when it appeared in the exam. Seventy two percent. Seventy two percent of people had no trouble. Here's the picture that is given to us. I need the room so I need to raise all of this. We are told that this is y degree, this is y degree, this is y degree, this is y degree, this is x degree, this is x degree, this is x degree. This is how this is how the picture appears. Nothing else at all. The only thing that I have left out in the picture as it appears in the exam is something out of something that I left out out of laziness. They have a symbol for degrees, obviously. This is y degree, this is y degree, y degree, y degree, x degree, x degree, and x degree. This is exactly how the picture appears in the exam. They tell us absolutely nothing at all about, about the picture other than this part. And here's what you are asked to compare. Column A, x plus y, versus column B, 120 x plus y versus 120. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. As always, I insist that you do, do, that you do the problem yourself first and then you compare your work against the work that we'll do together in a few seconds. So here we go. Now here's what's going on. Here's what's going on. The first part is very simple. We know the sum of the angles in any triangle, sum of the angle in any triangle. It doesn't matter what the triangle is, the sum of the angle. The fact that it happens to be an equilateral triangle because all of these are the same angles is, is, is besides the point here. Even if the, even if the triangle turned out to be not to be equilateral, sum of the angles in any triangle is 180. So we know that x plus x plus x, x plus x plus x, 3x, we know is 180. Which tells us 3x equals 180. That tells us that each of the x has to be 60. I don't know why I'm making too much fuss about it. Each of the x has to be 60. Right there, put it here. Now what about the y? y comes from this, this picture right here, the bottom picture. Bottom picture is a quadrilateral. Is a quadrilateral. It does not need to be a square. It does look like a square, but it does not need to be a square. It could be rectangle, it could be any four-sided picture, it could be any shape, no matter what the shape of the picture is, as long as it is four-sided picture, a quadrilateral, the sum of the angles in a quadrilateral is 360. Sum of the angles in a quadrilateral, one, two, three, four angles here, and that has to equal 360. Why 360? Because a quadrilateral, a quadrilateral is simply a marriage of two triangles. It's simply a marriage of two triangles some of the angles in the top triangle is 180, some of the angles in the bottom triangle is 180, therefore some of the angles in the quadrilateral is 360, and that is made up of 4y. Since 4y equals 360, since 4y equals 360, y has to equal 90 degrees. So y is 90, 90 plus 80, that's 80 plus 80 is 160, 160 plus 10 is 170, 170 of course is more than 120. The answer is A. The answer is A. Oh, that should have been 60, not 80, sorry. That should have been 60, x is 60. It still doesn't change the fact that 150 is more than 120. 150 is more than 120, the answer is A. Right here, x is 60, y is 90. Let's do the next one, number 10. Question number 10. Question number 10, as soon as I finish putting it on the blackboard, pause the video immediately, 
do it yourself first as I always tell you you will always learn more you learn you learn to appreciate the techniques uh, and, the, and, 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 the, and the shortcuts that are there that you can take advantage of but you will begin to appreciate it more appreciate them more if you first do the problems yourself any which way that comes to your mind and then you will begin to compare the long way of doing something and begin to understand what quantitative comparison means these questions are not called quantitative computation I'm giving you lots of hints here number 10 65 percent of people took the exam about two-thirds of the people had no trouble here's what we're being asked to compare 1 over 4 plus 1 over 3 plus half versus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 quarter uh, 3 plus 1 quarter one more time one more time 1 over this is, that is a 1 1 divided by 1 divided by 4 plus 1 over 3 plus half 1 divided by 2 plus 1 over 3 and a quarter, or 3 plus 1 quarter. I am going to give you 5 seconds to pause and unpause the video, do the problem yourself first and then compare your work against the work that we'll do together, okay? Here we go, 5 seconds. Here's what's going on, okay? Here's what we're going on. What we need to understand is that this part, as you can clearly see, is 1, had it been 1 divided by 3, 1 divided by 3 is less than 1. 1 divided by 3 and a half is still less than 1. So this is going to be some decimal point, okay? Listen carefully. This is going to be some decimal. This is some decimal. Some decimal. Some decimal meaning that it's, it's not more than 1, it's going to be between 0 and 1. It's point something. It's point something. Similarly here, similarly same exact logic applies here. 1 divided by 3 is less than 1. And therefore 1 divided by 3 and a quarter is still going to be less than 1. It is some, it is some decimal. Some decimal. Are you with me? Are you with me so far? Here we go. So this is how what we're going to do. So what we are basically, what we are essentially dealing with, what we are essentially dealing with is 1 over 4 plus some decimal which can be written as which can be written as 1 over something more than 4 something more than 4 means that it obviously it's less than 5 because had it been more than 5 we would have said 5 plus some 4 plus means it's 4 point something 1 over 4 point something versus versus 1 over 2 point something of course 1 quarter is going to be less than 1 half the answer is B the answer is B. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.